absolute favorite dish is the huevos rancheros. You are the yolk to my white. You're the tomato to my salsa. I need you and you're why I get up in the morning. I'm Pam Stewart and I'm a spoken word artist. Our guest today is spoken word artist Pam Stewart. We're preparing West Coast style huevos rancheros with refried beans, fresh tomato salsa, poached eggs, and an avocado hollandaise. We're making her dish my way. I'm Garrett Schack, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Today we have as a guest spoken word artist Pam Stewart. Hi Pam. Hi. How are you? Good. Excellent. Pam, you're the master crafter of words, but my vocabulary is food. And today we're preparing huevos rancheros mm -hmm. with fresh salsa, refried beans, poached eggs, and avocado hollandaise. Sound delicious? That sounds perfect. I thought so too. So, we have to get a few things started to get rolling here. So you see in front of us, we've got a bunch of ingredients. Okay. All right, and just like poetry, we got to put them all together and make them all kind of work, uh, work as one, right? Okay. So, uh, I'd like some help from you. We're going to mix up some salsa over there. Okay. So you can see we've got some fresh diced tomatoes, some fresh onion, and I'll get you just to fire those into this pan right here, or into this bowl right here, and then we'll uh, we'll just sort of start mixing those together. Okay. In the meantime, I'm gonna make refried beans. Do you, okay. So we do normally make refried beans at home, or have you ever tried making this at home? I'm guilty of using the canned refried beans. Oh, okay. I okay. take shortcuts in my cooking. <laughs> Fair enough, that happens. Uh, well, what we're going to do today is we're just using some pinto beans. So they've already been cooked and they are canned pinto beans. Uh, but that's sort of the traditional bean for the huevos, huevos rancheros, refried bean style. Yeah. Uh, some shallot here. I'm gonna throw into a nice hot pan. There we go. Nice hot pan. <laughs> Tell me about spoken word. How does that uh, how does that work for you? And what's what's that all about for those people that don't know? So I have been performing for about five years. Okay. I got into it. Um, a friend took me to an event, and I think from then on I was hooked. Yeah. And in Winnipeg, I went to my first event, and it was in Victoria about a year later that I really started going hard into it and taking it seriously. Like writing your own yeah. uh, piece, what are they called, pieces, acts? Yeah, like, yeah? pieces, poems, um, should I be mixing this? Well, you can. Are yeah. you trying to work and talk at the same I'm time? I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to over challenge. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I'm trying to impress you with my multitasking abilities. I like it. I like yeah. it. Uh, well, let, let me tell you what's going on here. I've got okay. some saute, uh, sautéed shallots and garlic. Yeah. I'm gonna add a little cumin. Okay. All right. And then we're gonna put our put our pinto beans in there and let them cook out a little bit. They're already cooked, but we want to sort of warm it up. And we're also gonna mash it around with this fork here in a sec, so we'll get that sort of, you know, that mashed refried bean yeah. kind of texture and look, right? Okay. Okay, I'll add a little salt. And my, we'll let that sort of cook away a little bit. My style of cooking is generally extra garlic, extra salt, and you'll be fine. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Not good for the boyfriends though, hey? Keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> the garlic tends to keep they them learn, away. They learn to adjust. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> keep, might keep them away at the bar, but you know, who knows? Those who can't handle it don't last. Fair enough. Big squeeze in there. Okay. So we're making this super fresh salsa. The ingredients here are really quite, quite simple. We got nice fresh lime juice. Okay. Uh, cilantro we're gonna add next. Ooh, yeah. So you can go ahead and grab like probably about half of that bunch there. Okay. How, how do you feel about using a knife? Are you good with chopping skills? I feel real good about it. How do you feel about stems? <laughs> I like the stems. Okay. The stems, that's the nice part about cilantro is you can actually use the stems, right? It's, okay. it's uh, all part, all edible. Okay, I'm on it. So we're just sort of sauteing these around and I'm mashing them at the same time. So it's starting to come together. I can really, can you smell the cumin? Oh, it smells smell great. Smell the cumin. The sm I can smell the fresh lime that you squeezed in there, which is awesome. I've never worked with cumin before. Oh no, it's a great flavor and, and it's really prominent in Mexican cuisine, so. Yeah. All right, into there that goes. I'm gonna add a nice big pinch of salt. Yep, I'm all over the salt. There we are, perfect. Okay. And then my secret ingredient that I love to add to any of my salsas is just a dash of cinnamon. Ooh. So it gives this little sweetness and an interesting flavor to the salsa where people are going, oh, what's that, right? So yep. splash a little bit in there. Not too much, I mean, you don't want it tasting like your porridge in the morning or anything like that, but just a little bit to kind of get it going. Cinnamon is not something I ever would have thought of for this. No, hey? again, another really sort of prominent flavor in Mexican cuisine, and I just like to play around with it and give it that, it, again, like I said, it gives it that interest, right? It gives it that like, oh, what's that? Olive oil? Yeah, This kind of helps uh, everything stick to, the, stick to the tomatoes. And then last but not least, we want to add some jalapeno. So I've got one nice looking jalapeno here. I don't want to make it too hot, so I'm going to take the seeds and the spine or the little 
you know, white bit out of there. Yeah, okay. 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 And just dice this up fairly fine. I think I go, I think I cook Mexican because I found it as a really simple way to yep. get into food and preparing my own food. Yeah. Well, and simple and flavorful, right? Yeah. So lots something of like flavor. this. Boom, our fresh salsa is done. You just give it a little toss around there. That looks wonderful. Looks good. I can I can smell the cinnamon. Hopefully you can too. And let's grab a spoon here and you can give it a little taste. Yes, please. I don't have any spoons, so we're gonna have to go with a fork. I literally have no spoons on set. <laughs> this is crazy, hey? It's fine with me. Mm. Oh yeah. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Pretty tasty. Hey, I love the freshness of the cilantro. That was so simple. When you get a bite of that, yeah. Yeah. And how like you can put that on anything. Eat that with chips or throw it on, you know, a piece of chicken would be great. Yeah, no, that's really tasty. Okay. Thank you for making some salsa with me. Yep. Next up, let's get our sheet pan out here and we'll start laying out our tortillas. So huevos, rancheros, eggs on a ranch. I guess that's the direct that's, translation. That's I what it is. Yeah. I don't really know, but it sounds mm -hmm. good to me. So we're gonna take our ranch and just lay these down here. Okay. <laughs> we're just using some flour tortillas. Uh, I've got some rice here. This is just like some leftover rice that we had in the fridge. Um, it's already been flavored with a little bit of cumin, so it's gonna help accent the flavor of our beans over there. Beans and rice, pretty classic in Central and Southern American cuisine. I've traveled Central and mostly just Central America. Yeah. And yeah, every meal, beans yeah. and rice. Which Absolutely. isn't which isn't a bad thing. Mm -mm. Good energy for the day. Healthy, cheap. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Especially yeah. Especially when you're traveling. Yeah. Exactly. Now we're just gonna put a bit of this on each one. And while once I've got it on there, do you mind just putting one piece of cilantro or whatever, like a piece of cilantro right in the middle, and then folding it over? And I'll keep going on the other sure. ones. Sure. All right. So, being a spoken word artist, you're on stage by yourself quite often, aren't you? Yeah, So generally. is this a little, uh, this feel a little different here, having to yeah. sh share the limelight with me or I what? don't really love it. I feel like I should be leading this show. <laughs> I believe it, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not as well versed in uh, Mexican cuisine as you. Fair enough. So you're gonna leave me to leave me to it, hey? Yeah, I'll, I'll let you do the work and then I'll, I'll taste at the end. Awesome, I like it. Yeah. Fold it over. I'm from Winnipeg. I think I'm making this more like a pierogi. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, the Ukrainian, <laughs> the Ukrainian Mexican uh, Ukrainian yeah. mashup here. This yeah. is great. Taylor Swift's got nothing on you, hey? <laughs> I'm a true artist. <laughs> Fair enough. Now, some cheese. Okay. We're gonna splash some of that just over top. And then I'll get you to fire these in the oven. And while they're cooking, we'll head out, we'll head out to the break. This is our chance to catch a breather and get ready for the next little portion of this, all right? Thanks. Okay, because I worked right. up a bit of a sweat there. I bet you did. So fire it in the oven, okay. 350 degrees, won't take long. It's back to our kitchen where we're working with spoken word artist Pam Stewart on my version of her favorite dish. West Coast style huevos rancheros with refried beans, fresh tomato salsa, poached eggs, and avocado hollandaise. Ooh. What, what's with the snapping? What's that all about? In poetry, that's how we like, you know that we like what you're putting out there. Oh, okay. Clapping would be too uh, interruptive well, too, because it's too aggressive. Too aggressive, right? Yeah. So none of that. We yeah. Just... So we snap. All right, all right. We snap to show our appreciation. Well, hopefully this delicious meal that we're preparing here will be snap worthy by the time we get to the end of the show. The smells suggest it will be. I will. I like. I like how that goes already. Okay, our uh, tortillas filled with refried beans and rice and a little cheese on top are hanging out in the uh, in the oven, staying warm. Okay. Now we need to poach some eggs. So I've got some water boiling over here. We've put uh, probably about a tablespoon worth of white vinegar in there. Okay. That kind of helps seize up the whites around the yolk, right? So we're gonna crack them in there and just drop them in. There we go. And we'll do a couple of eggs here. Now this water that we're using here, the poaching pot, is gonna do double duty for us because we're also gonna use it to make our hollandaise. So you can see here I've got a couple of egg yolks already separated into the bowl. Okay. We need a little white wine. Just your, your, your favorite, right? Typical. Yeah, I mean, it's early morning, right? Typical so. for breakfast, a little <laughs> white wine. Exactly. A little white wine, a couple drops of your favorite sort of hot sauce. I like to use that one. Tabasco is really good. Yeah. Some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Also good in Caesars. Absolutely. Yep. Very, very true. Now we want to just whisk that all together, and we're going to do it over top of here, OK? OK. Now, this isn't something you and I work together at Chateau Victoria, yeah. and this isn't typically on the menu here, so this is probably a pretty special occasion for you at the moment, huh? This is very exciting. And I'm actually cooking for you personally. I know. <laughs> I'm also excited about that. That's always very nice. Tell me a little bit more about poetry, because I mean, you do more than just 
you know, stand up and, and recite a poem, right? Yeah, so poetry was how I really got big into writing. And then when I moved to Victoria, that's when I started competing. And okay. that's also when I started organizing events. I throw a festival every summer. It's called Slam by the Sea, and it's held down by the water. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, it's been drawing really good attendances. Yeah, and now that's not that's not a competition, right? That's for sort of anyone to come out and, and exactly. have their chance on the stage. And I generally uh, book the poets, okay. um, but it's, it's open to the public, and it's not competitive. And that's where people get confused, because slam poetry is competitive by nature, uh, okay. but spoken word is just a performance of a poem. And now you, but you do slam poetry as well. Yeah, I do and, both. And, and I mean, I happen to know that you're pretty darn good at it because you're representing what British Columbia I'm or representing Victoria? Victoria. Okay, that's so really cool. I get to go to Vancouver at the end of this month to go to the um, individual poetry slam representing the city. Awesome, that's so yeah, cool, it so is. cool. And it's, I mean, it's more than just like I said, it's more than just reciting a poem for people, right? Like you're actually performing, like it's a performance. Performance art, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Very few people improvise. It's um, it's written, it's memorized, it's practiced and rehearsed. Like this is one of the things I teach in high schools when I get to go in and, and teach spoken word. Neat. Yeah, it, poetry has just opened so many doors for me. So have a look here. Okay. Let's turn your attention back to me again, yeah, please. Yeah. Jeez, hey, you're an only child. <laughs> <laughs> I just so. act like one. <laughs> nice. So the eggs are looking pretty good. I'm giving it a little push there. You can see that it's kind of bouncing back on us a little mm. bit, right? So that looks great. We're gonna take those out and just set them on our little water, little blotting cloth here. So we want we don't want the water in our dish, so we need to sort of let it uh, let it rest a little bit. Okay. Set those over there, and then we'll get back to action here on our whiskey. So what I'm trying to do is kind of create some air in the yolk and wine sort of flavor mixture that we did here. And then we're, what we're going to do, once that's kind of become fluffy, we're going to take it off the heat, and we're going to start adding avocado oil. Okay. And some clarified butter. You couldn't do it with just straight avocado oil. It would get all, uh, it, it just would separate on us and just wouldn't work out very well. So we have to do a little bit of both here. Now be very careful when you're doing this at home because you can see it's kind of steaming and boiling up on us. Yeah, this is a much more advanced way than I do my Weibo Tranchero. Oh yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's true, and that's why it's my dish. Yeah. Right? We're yeah. doing your dish my way. It's great. <laughs> you can see it's getting nice and fluffy, so that means the eggs are actually starting to cook in there already. Yeah. Okay. And I'm making a giant mess, which uh, you know, hopefully my sous chef will clean up afterwards. <laughs> I also don't have a sous chef at home when I'm making this. <laughs> Fair enough. That is that is a very handy thing to have. I will right. lie to you. We're almost there. Let me give it just a couple more seconds. A couple more minutes of whisking here. I gotta say the butter smells great. <laughs> What's, nothing wrong with butter, right? Nothing wrong with added butter. I mean, uh, if it could be a cologne, I would probably wear it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there we go. You see how it's kind of starting to, you can yeah, see definitely. that it keeps kind of ribbons down there and that kind of stuff. Fluffy. I don't know if they can see that at home, hopefully, yeah. So we're going like this. You can see it's nice and fluffy. Sometimes the bowl stays, we've got a nice ribbon there. Okay. Perfect, okay? So that's the stage we want it to be at when we start adding our oil. I'll get you to drizzle a little bit at a time. Okay, you'll tell me when. Yeah, don't go too quick, so pour, pour it in slowly, okay. not too fast. That's good. A little bit more? Yeah, go a little bit more. So the idea here is if you were to fire it all in there at once, it would just separate and you'd just have this big gloopy mess of okay. nothing good, right? So go ahead and pour a little bit more in, a little bit more. So avocado oil is fairly expensive too, but it adds a really nice light sort of flavor to it here. Okay, another little, little bit, a okay. little stream. Okay, good. And then I'll get you to whisk while I add a little bit of butter. You know, can't do all the work here. God, I feel like <laughs> such a good cook today. Don't you? Yeah, I'm really impressing myself. Well, you're impressing me too, that's for sure. <laughs> all right, we might put you to work at, uh, at, the, at the hotel. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah? So we'll just get the scrape down the sides a little bit there. Do you want this back? Perfect, yes, please, give it to me. <laughs> all right, perfect. Uh, so, why don't you open up that avocado? Do you use avocados at home much? I, I use avocados a lot. So. All right, perfect. So you know how to get the pit out and all that kind of stuff? I know my way. I, well, <laughs> it's probably the same as mine. Okay. Can I trust you to do that yeah, while I go get the... Uh, that is the same way as mine. Yeah. I'm gonna go get the, the uh, tortillas out of the oven. Okay? okay, perfect. All right, let me just shift this over here. Perfect, you can scoop it out of there uh, and put it right into the hollandaise. Right into the hollandaise, okay. Oh, well, look at these guys. Ooh, those are looking and smelling good. Doesn't that look great? Absolutely. Awesome, I love how the cheese goes nice and crispy yeah. like that. That's so ideal. Okay, in it goes. Perfect. 
I'm gonna use the whisk again here, just to mash up that avocado. Mm -hmm. We wanna work kinda quickly at this point because the avocado will start to sort of break down our holidays. That's okay, perfect. There we go. So in poetry, does it always have to rhyme? Because I, I feel like sometimes it doesn't, right? Like the newer stuff rarely rhymes. Oh really? Um, it's fun to listen to. Yeah. So sometimes I put my stuff to music, um, and a lot of my stuff does rhyme. But I try and teach when I'm in when I'm in schools and in classes. Yeah. Um, just just write. Just write about your feelings. Write about your day. Because that's so often the biggest block is people thinking they can't write. But oh, right. everyone can write. So they're like, oh, I just don't know what to put in here. I, I, I can't find the right word to express the feeling that rhymes with this and that. Well, so like, it doesn't have to be that conforming. No. It can be really like. And people think it has to be smart. It doesn't have to be smart. It just has to be honest. <laughs> You're making like, poetry sound really easy. It is. Maybe, maybe I should take it up because this cooking thing, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's working out. We'll see once we taste it. OK, I'm just, I've just put the egg back in the water here. OK. Just, and I'm only going to do one egg on top of these guys right now because, you know, maybe maybe we've had a bit to drink last night and this hangover breakfast is uh, is going to be just enough. So Perfect. we're just going to warm it back up in the stove there. In the water, okay. Yeah, or on the stove in the water. And we'll set that nested nicely right there. Grab a spoonful and maybe just put a nice dollop. Here you go. Oh, thank put you. Put a nice dollop of the, the fresh salsa on there. And then I'll grab a spoon. This salsa that I made. That's right. On top of the egg? Right on top of the Not egg, yeah. Not worrying about breaking it? Okay. No, just put it wherever you'd like. Man, this hollandaise looks great. I'm a sauce person. I just... Oh, really? You're gonna I'm have to try this. all about sauces. This is so good. Give that a little taste. Yeah. In fact, I think it needs just a bit of salt. You said you liked salt anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So a bit of salt, right? Like, so mm -hmm. like adds that extra bit of creaminess to, uh, wow. to avocado. Yeah. Because the difference between mine and yours is I do guacamole. I'm yeah. big on guacamole. Well, this, this is, is my really my, nice. my sort of version of guacamole, right? Yeah. There we go. This is all for me, right? Yeah, you don't, yeah. Uh, I don't else have gets to share it. this? <laughs> yeah, okay, good. I'm going to put a few slices of the, like just a nice chili pepper on there. Hopefully you like it a little bit spicy. A little bit, yeah. As I do. A couple of these on there to make it look pretty. There we go. We got some Ooh. cilantro in there. Oh, wow. Maybe a fresh squeeze of lime juice, and then we're good to go. Thank goodness I came hungry. I know, right? Do this. And what do you think? Yeah. West Coast style huevos rancheros. I am very excited. Refried beans, fresh tomato salsa, poached egg, and avocado hollandaise. Doesn't that look amazing? Yeah. Should we give it a try? Yes. All right. Fork for you. Thank you. And one for me. Okay. Let's give it a try here. Oh, I can't wait to get some of that fresh salsa in there. Does mine have to be a lady-sized bite? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> mine's, mine's not going to be. No, okay, good. <laughs> no lady-sized bites. No. How is it? Mm. Well, I'll go back for seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that fresh lime. Tortilla's nice and crispy. Yep. I get the cumin from the yep. from the rice and the refried greens. Mm. That's super And a little squeeze tasty. of the fresh lime. Awesome, hey? Thanks so much for being here, Pam. That's awesome. I can't wait to finish this dish up with you. And I think we definitely got some snaps going. You for this definitely one. earned snaps for this one. <laughs> All right, dig back in. All right. Now we can take a big bite. Now, what would breakfast be without an amazing drink to share it with? With me today is Alicia from Clive's Classic Lounge. Hi, Alicia. How are you? Great. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm uh, excited about this dish because we've got mm -hmm. huevos rancheros, which is a, a quintessential classic, right? One of my favorites. Uh, and I was uh, looking forward to seeing what you would pair with it today. Yeah, definitely. Um, so what I have for you today is it's a coffee drink. You know, we okay. all get up in the morning, especially if you're having brunch with friends. I think it's nice to have some coffee. And, we need uh, that caffeine shot, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. And we also need some shots of something else. So sticking with the Mexican theme here, I'm going to be uh, putting some, some tequila in this. Okay, I'm, tequila and coffee, hey? Heck yes. I like where you're going with this. All right. Uh, tequila and coffee go 
really well together just as flavors. So I know it's maybe not the first combination people think of, but it, it really does work. And I, uh, well, it kind of gets your afternoon drink and your morning exactly. drink combined. Yeah. And, yeah. You it's efficient. Toast right into evening, you know? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> so what I've got here also is a little uh, little yellow chartreuse. Now this is a liquor that has quite a bit of saffron in it. Okay. One of the, uh, the, the big notes there. And then just to round things out, I'm going to add some lavender syrup as well. So it has so. these pretty, these are some pretty intense flavors we got going Very on Very in intense right? flavors. If you think about coffee, that's quite an intense flavor as well, you know? Mm. It's got uh, all the bitterness and beautiful aromas there. I can smell, I can smell <laughs> the, the tequila, the, I guess the agave coming already there. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, coming right up at, right up out of that uh, that shaker there. I'm just heating it up in the shaker, by the way. I've got some hot water under there that we're uh, doing that with, just because otherwise you're pouring room temperature booze into hot coffee. And yeah, it cools your coffee yeah, down, right? Exactly. We don't so, want that. So uh, what, uh, what kind of name would we put on this, this beverage of, um, that you've created here? Breakfast in Acapulco, you know, just if I, were, Acapulco. if I were traveling in Mexico and I was perhaps in Mexico City or wherever, this is probably what or I would want to have. Or Acapulco. <laughs> this is what I would want to have. <laughs> we might want to try it, eh? <laughs> I like it. It's got a Some little lemon. bit of lemon. Yeah, the Italians are always uh, putting lemon in their coffee. Yeah, they can't they be wrong. Extra you know? bitter, right? Yeah. Like it just adds more bitterness to it, which is a really unique flavor. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, there we go. So I like cheers. a choice of glassware, too. Very nice. <laughs> fancy, you. Uh, fancy coffee cups, eh? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Not half bad, hey? Oh, that's that's <laughs> better than better than not half bad. It's only a quarter bad. No, okay, great. I'm I'll just take kidding. <laughs> that is so good. It's absolutely awesome. delicious. So dig into this. So whoever's mm -hmm. ranchos, we got refried beans in there, we've got an egg. And check this out. So normally you have guacamole. Mm-hmm. I made hollandaise with avocado oil oh, and yes. avocados. So We're speaking to my soul right mm. now. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Oh. Spectacular. You know what? The lime juice in there works so well with the mm. citrus and with the with the tequila. Yeah, it kind of ties it all together. Great right? combination. That's, That's amazing. Incredible. Mm. Thanks so much, Alicia. Thank you very much for Thank being here. For this is delicious. Me. We're definitely going to finish this off before we go oh, today, yes. okay? <laughs> Check out our website. You'll find more information on today's show and maybe a few surprises. I'm Garrett Shack. Thanks for watching and don't forget to savor the flavor. Mm.